Hi, and welcome to jhudgens.com Tech Tips channel, where I upload all kinds of very helpful networking, technology, and VoIP tutorials to help you in your business, hobby, or just around the house. If you like what you see here today and you find these tutorials helpful, please subscribe and click that bell, because I'm constantly uploading very helpful content for the general public to use. In this Tech Tips video, I'm going to show you how I fixed a connection problem from my Cisco SPA112 ATA to my Cordial hosted SIP trunk. And if you want to know how to provision a Cisco SPA112 ATA, please check out my video on how to configure a Cisco SPA112 to a Cordial hosted SIP trunk. You know, in today's job market, it's always good to have a backup plan for making money or sometimes you might just be tired of working for someone else and you think it's time to be your own boss. Well, my friend John Cristani has been helping guys like you and me become wealthy for many years now and he has a free training course that shows you step by step how to earn a six-figure side income online. That's right, side income. You can do this and still keep your day job if you want to. Just click on the link in the description below to get your free training now. Okay, I ran across a problem today when I was configuring a, uh, my ATA. Um, you can see here on the screen, I have two SIP trunks that I provision uh, on my Cordial hosted platform. And what it usually looks like when you configure a SIP trunk, when you go to get your credentials, that you're going to paste into your uh, router, whatever router you're using. I'm using a Cisco SPA112. Um, this is what it looks like. You know, you have your username here, your password, your SIP registration name, and that all goes into the Quick Set page uh, shown here. Now. Today when I tried to use these credentials, uh, you know, it registered okay and the problem I had was I can call out but I was not able to dial in and no matter what I did I could not dial in using this setup and using this username. So what I did, I'll go back to the other page. What I did was I used the telephone number for my username instead of the username. And this is what it looks like. When you click on, you know, the other page, it, it was a standard username. I clicked on telephone number. And this number right here was over in this box that said available. I just clicked on that number. It came over to here. And so now I'm using that as my username this is my password and this is still my SIP proxy and what you need to do is go down there and you still need to uh, do your outbound caller ID number use this phone number this is going to be your caller ID and you need to set up your E911 address so when you log into your SPA 112 you want to put the phone number as your username here and the rest of the credentials server proxy and password will stay the same and they will go here and here and that's how I overcame that problem now I can call in and I can call out on that SIP trunk don't know why it is but uh, it seems to work so I just thought it might help you if you come across the same problems when you can you can dial out of a SIP trunk uh, on a gateway, but you can't dial in. Try using that telephone number as a username. Hope this helps. Before I get started, I want to show you this awesome little device that saves me from those pesky dead Wi-Fi spots in my home, garage, and backyard. Before I installed this Wi-Fi Super Booster, I was constantly losing signal while surfing, streaming, and listening to music on my back deck in my garage, and even upstairs in my bedroom. This little baby solved all my problems real quick. All you do is plug it into any electrical outlet, let it auto-configure, and bam, you're up and running. It's great for home or office. Just click the link in the description below to get yours.